Hi everyone, I'm Backrolls, and welcome to the Nintendo Nerds, a show where we talk about art, design, and all things Nintendo. So stick around, because in today's video, we'll be sharing idea number two for your Animal Crossing New Horizons visual journal, Painting Your Villager, as well as how to fix a mistake in your sketchbook. So, what to do when you've messed up. Hi fellow nerds, how's it going? I've been having a great time keeping along my track of my Animal Crossing New Horizons journey, but pretty early on in this process, I made a mistake. And so, I'm gonna show you an easy fix when you have a sketchbook you want to keep working in. I wanted to sketch my villager, and the great thing about this paper is that it is recycled cotton and it takes paint really beautifully, but it does not take sketching really beautifully. So I was sketching out my villager and I ended up not being happy with the feet and I spent way too much time erasing and redoing and erasing and redoing because that's just how I sketch, and a lot of you might be similar in that way. So you have to be really careful sometimes with handmade paper that you're not going to tear up the paper too much. Now I wrote don't paint me here in big letters because I worked really hard on this map and I really don't want to mess it up. And I had to write this reminder for myself because there were even times where I've been saying to myself in a way to work this out, what if I did a thin layer of so and so? No, I can't. Don't touch it. So, with that, my workaround is going to be adding another piece of paper and just adhering it right into the journal. And I'll show you what that looks like later. But for now, here's a sketch of my villager that I'm pretty pleased with. Obviously, there is only one proper reference pose for villagers, as far as I'm concerned. And that's this one. But page two is going to be my villager, and why don't I just start painting him and have fun with it? One very important thing that I need to do is lift the graphite. So whenever you paint in watercolor, if you paint over graphite, that's going to seal it in permanently. It is stuck there for good. And I'd like to pull up at least most of the graphite from my sketch before I go into inking. As you can see, I got a little excited and started into inking and then remembered that I need to do this. So real quick, I'm just going to lightly press into the artwork so that's what you can do with a kneaded eraser and it comes up on the kneaded eraser most of the graphite gets pulled up it just makes for less visible lines and it's all a matter of preference so i'm gonna do that now i'd just like to say there's no need to be an expert in anatomy in order to take on a project like this this came directly from a new horizon screenshot you just need to observe and sketch patiently. You ever realize that your hands are just not steady enough for inking? Look at look at that ring finger shaking. I'm gonna mess something up if I keep trying to ink right now. So hang it up. Realize when you don't have good hands. Come back to it later. Let's not mess up my fixed drawing. So on this first inking pass, I'm using a 0.1 Stadler pigment liner. It's great for starting thin and then building up your lines over time. And then, to paint my villager, I'm using my Paul Rubens 48 pan set. As I've said in previous videos, I'm very pleased with the water flow and pigmentation on this set. It's also making me spend more time with my white and black watercolors, two paints I rarely used before this sketchbook. And bringing them into my rotation has been a lovely surprise. Now, there are some traditionalists who really don't want anything to do with black watercolor, but both blacks and the white in this set mix very well, and I can get some really nice values if I add a subtle touch.
To add some complexity to the hair and to highlight individual strands, I mixed just a little dash of white into my violet. Now I definitely have an old faithful when it comes to the way I like to dress up my villager. I even use this costume under my wand as, quote, classic me. But if you change around your costumes a lot, just have fun with it. Choose something that you're currently wearing, one of your favorite outfits, or maybe even what you wore for bunny day. Now what you see here as I'm filling in the background is one of my favorite techniques in watercolor, and that is called wet on wet technique. A lot of people find watercolor to be really intimidating, but one of the key rules to remember that will help you get started is that water will only travel on the page where it's already wet. And so wet on wet watercolor allows you to make a lovely loose flow while still keeping parts of your page intact. Once I'm happy with my paint job and it's completely dry, now it's time to cut it out and adhere it into the journal. One of the things I love about the Animal Crossing costume changes is that it has this very pop art feel to it. And so I decided this would be a really good opportunity to dig into some of this brightly colored paper that I have lying around. After choosing which would be best for my setup, I adhered my favorite background to a 4x6 piece of watercolor cardstock. Now at first I tried to use a spray adhesive, but it just was not committing to the backing that I have, so it was time to bust out the super glue. If you are of the age where you probably need to ask a parent to use the super glue, please, get help doing this. And there you have it, my villager sketch and some quick tips on how to fix a page in your journal you're not happy with. We hope that you leave this video feeling inspired and ready to start your Animal Crossing visual journal of your own. If you do, we'd love to see it. Please message us on Twitter or Instagram and we just might bring you on the show to talk about it. As always, we hope you leave this video ready to pick up a pro controller, a paintbrush, or a pen. I'm Backrolls, and this has been the Nintendo Nerds. <laughs>